All right, good morning. Sitting here in my underwear. Not that you needed to know that, but I figured I would talk about the uh, soil tests that I had taken. Uh, if you watch my Instagram, Facebook, whatever, you saw that I had a little electric meter that uh, tested your pH. Now, generally that thing is, it's close. It's not great, but it's close. Um, it was cold that day, so that will affect, according to somebody that had written in, uh, will affect the uh, actual pH on that um, meter. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, uh, it uh, it's generally pretty close, but there's one field that showed up that the pH was 2, and quite honestly, I knew that it was off. I just used that for cinematic effect. Um, that was the field number four here, and yes, the pH on that field was very low. It was 5.4. I need to raise that at least one point, but the buffer pH is 6.9. Uh, so I have hope of getting this raised pretty quickly. So what you're watching is me loading lime in that particular field uh, and spreading uh, a fairly heavy amount on there. I put two ton to the acre on that field alone just because. Um, no, I put a ton and a half. Sorry, I put 3,000 pounds. Sorry, I misspoke. But for the most part, all the fields that I had uh, sampled on this farm were not terrible. Uh, we'll just go through the pHs here. So the first field was 5.7, not great. Um, second field, 6.2. Third field, 5.9. Of course, this field, 5.4. And then 60 and 60 and so on and so forth. They're all six. For some reason, they're all six. Buffer pH is between um, 6.5 and 7 pH. Uh, there's another farm there. Two other farms that I picked up. Those are 63 and 61 pH for those. The uh, buffer pHs on both of those fields are seven. So the reason they're seven is because they're situated over limestone. Mm. So what affects your pH? Um, poor microbial activity and fungal activity in your soil. That will cause your pHs to drop. The less uh, microbial activity you have in the soil, that's when your soil goes south because it's out of balance. So you can raise your pHs by using different vegetations or cover crops, but the best way to really get it going uh, to an, you gotta start somewhere, let's put it this way. And generally starting somewhere is anything above 6.5. So to raise these, these pHs up pretty, pretty rapidly, I'm using a high calcium lime. I used it last year, worked great. Uh, this year I'm hoping to have the same responses uh, actually a little better response is because I'm going to run it over with the BT when I put in my cover crop which is coming pretty darn fast. Now we can go down the list of other other uh, things that are here. The organic matter on these farms is awful. The first field is 1.6, the second field is 1.8. Uh, those fields are droughty ground in gravelly soil. Gravel. When I say gravel I'm telling you it's gravel. All of it is gravel. And you get to the third field and it's 2.3, 1.6. So probably if I average these out, all of them out, 2.0, 2.8, it's going to average at about a 2% organic matter, which is more than likely where it is across the board because the farmer that farmed it before me treated it pretty well the same. Wheat, soybeans, wheat, soybeans. Take the straw off, put soybeans in, wheat, soybeans, wheat, soybeans for many, many years. Like a dozen years. I don't think he had corn in there in at least since 2009. So you're talking quite a while. So the organic matter is low. All no-till though. Didn't plow the ground. Phosphate levels are medium to good. A couple of low, but they're barely low. You know, they're like a point or two under, you know, part per million, you know, 100,000 parts per million or whatever the hell it is. Potassium is all medium to good across the board, all of it, which is good because he had soybeans, so he must have maintained the potash there. Manganese, or is that magnesium? Yeah, that's magnesium. Good 
to, to moderate. Um, calcium levels, all good except for two. Um, and they're moderate, but they're, it, it's weird. It's, it's really weird because the, uh, the numbers don't line up for what I would think, you know. Uh, good at 592 uh, and moderate at 1115, but whatever. CEC levels, these are the cation exchange capacities. The best I've got here is 11.8. Uh, the worst I've got here is 4.6. No, wrong. Yeah, 4.0, 4.1, 4.1 on cation exchange. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of uh, shocking to me. I thought that the cation exchange would be better, but it's not. So we have to work on that. Building topsoil, carbon in the soil, building organic matter over the next. Uh, decade or so and hopefully I can get that cation exchange up to around 10-12. Um, you, can, you can affect that with uh, cover crops and good farming practices. Minimum, sto minimal soil disturbance. Um, sulfur, medium to low, uh, moderate to low. So ammonium sulfate is in the menu. Um, boron, non-existent, 0.2 it's just low across the board. Zinc is moderate to good. So with this, uh, and that's across the eight uh, samples that I had. So with this in mind, enjoy the video. I am going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, start the video now. It does work, but it doesn't work great. Um, but anyways, we're gonna go spread lime today. Uh, the lime that I have because I'm trying to get a uh, trying to get a cover crop planted and I'm not doing too well there's some uh, some issues and the issues that I'm having are not terrible they're just simple the uh, the uh, seed supplier that I'm look, trying to get a hold of uh, we had an agronomist that I was supposed to have call me and he didn't call me. But anyways, we're spreading this lime today and I'm low on fuel. I don't know if you caught any of that. I've got 11 gallons in my tank or 11%, which is not quite true, but it's close enough to scare you. Anyways, I sent Teresa down to Frenchtown to get fuel. <coughs> the reason I sent her down to Frenchtown to get fuel and why I am not delivering fuel to the farm is because every single day for the last week the crude oil price has come down and I'm going to not fill up when diesel fuel is three dollars and fifty cents I want to fuel up when diesel fuel is three dollars and fifteen cents saving a little bit of money because it's all about saving money in this name of the name of the game uh, how much money can you save how much do you really need to spend I'm fortunate that I didn't have a, a huge uh, equipment payment to make with last year's um, last year's crops because last year's crops did not do as well as I'd like them to. But uh, if I get into say October and it looks like I'm going to have to spend money, then I'll just go and buy a combine. And uh, September, October, something you know, you know, September, early October. We use the TR-96 until, you know, and we'll just, by the time I uh, get into uh, fall harvest, then I will know whether I'm going to need to spend money or not uh, to offset some of my taxes. I'll just go spend money and then depreciate, depreciate, depreciate. Uh, that is a cover crop wheat field, and I am very pleased with it. It was planted November 7th, November 7th. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. It just needs to be a cover crop um, to hold the soil and the moisture and keep uh, the microbial activity alive and well until I get my cash crop in there, which is fine. This is a harvestable wheat crop right over here. And somebody, I've uh, clicked this thing on and off several times. So Teresa came and picked up William. Um, I'm back to spreading or, you know, spreading this lime. Putting on 1,500 pounds to the acre. Uh, the buffer pH on this is seven. 
pretty consistent across the whole farm. Uh, when I, if you watch my Instagram post, you see that I posted a uh, picture of a silly little uh, uh, pH tester, electronic pH tester, and it was at like two. Well, believe it or not, it was not accurate, but it was definitely the worst field the worst field that is over here, but not terrible. So, well, it wasn't great. Let's put it that way. It's not It's not like I, what I was expecting. And I thought this ground would be somewhere around 4 pH. A pH of 4. That's how bad I thought it was going to be. The previous farmer is in the end of his career. You know, not that he, he's not a, it's, you know, he's not quitting by any means, but He's going to be, I think he's going to be 70. His wife is a fair bit younger. Um, but again, you get towards the end of your career, you stop doing the things that will carry you through for the next five, six years or four years or whatever it is. You, you know, how long do you want to farm? You want to farm until you're 75 or 80? I guess if you're physically able, then you do it. But, um, you know, it's just, it's just a tough just a tough thing to do uh, and spending money on lime just wasn't in his program at least a lot of money in lime now he did use mushroom compost on here and because of the drought the mushroom compost all lays on top of the ground he's a no-till farmer which is fine I have no problems with that at all um, but all that mushroom compost that he put on last spring still sits there right now you I can go down and I can I can find it it's still visible to the eye even though we've had a mild winter with rain last fall I was on here when I got the when I took over the property um, when I was bidding on it I came up and looked to see what was there and or what was here and obviously I have uh, obviously I have taken the soil tests I brought the lime over here before I got the pH test or the the, the fertilizer test back or the fertility test, pH testing back, soil tests. And the soil tests were stating that this field is 6.2. This particular field is, is 6.2 pH. So it's not bad at all. I'm putting 1,500 pound of lime on here. The fields behind me, they're all 6.61. Uh, that field over there was 5.7. So if I raise that field a half a percentage, a half a point with 1,500 pounds this year, uh, which in the top inch of the soil or two inches of soil, that's perfectly fine. Um, I'll be okay with there is those deer. Is the deer. But uh, yeah, so come on now. I got to hit my brakes and knock it down. Uh, this was soybeans, wheat, soybeans, wheat, soybeans, wheat, soybeans, wheat, soybeans, wheat. The organic matter is 1.5, 1.8. I don't have a 1.9. I do not have a 2% organic matter here because of just soybeans. Soybeans do not build organic matter. Soybeans do not build organic matter. Wheat when you take the straw away uh, it does not build organic matter it just doesn't there's no organic matter here uh, we'll be putting corn in here corn cover crop corn cover crop corn wheat cover crop corn wheat cover crop uh, that's what we're gonna do that's the plan here uh, gonna test the pH and everything else as we go through the year um, but these fields, this field here, you, you don't realize how big it really is because the former farmer here, he did not, he didn't spray this, he, I guess, I don't know, maybe, I don't know why, but it is a wet spot in the farm, you know, it is a wet spot. Calcium will help dry it out, believe it or not, lime, it will. You can see that it's wet here, I may have to put my foot on the gas here pretty quick it is wet here so and you can see where he went with the sprayer he did spray but yeah so there's a large portion of this field probably two acres or more three acres 
that he didn't, he wasn't even able to farm because of whether it was too wet or the deer wiped it out. And that's another thing. Then the fall panic them and the, this is switchgrass. I know he had switchgrass here and there is a pretty active spring right there. Um, these were old dairy pastures. There's quite a few deer here. I'm going to have to use my uh, my deer repellent on this. I'm believing I will be using the deer repellent on this just because uh, I don't want the deer to be a problem. So now what I'm going to do, because I'm light right now, I'm going to shut this off and I'm going to go back over here where it's so damn wet and I'm going to... I'm going to put more lime on in the wet spot so that I don't have to do it when I'm full. So here we go. Turn it on. Um, it's not going to do anything for a spring, but uh, ground that is inherently wet uh, generally is because there's a lack of organic matter, a lack of the pH could be low. I did not go out there with the gator and take soil tests in the wet spots. Obviously that is a spring. Uh, I'm not going to be planting this particular field until June. There's compost where he had put compost. So I'm pretty happy about that, that he put compost on, which is a good thing because if he's putting compost on, that means that there's fertility there that never broke down last year. And with all of this warm season and fall panicum grass that's in here, uh, I think I'm going to be okay with the, uh, I think I'm going to be okay, you know, once I get it planted through there, even if I have to kind of mud it in a little bit. All right, I think I'm empty now. No, nope, not yet. I want to put a little more lime on these wet spots. If you don't know, Lime will aid in drying out wet spots. It brings the soil to life, gives it some, uh, you know, the ability for the microbes and stuff to work a little better in those sour springs and stuff like that. And uh, you, it will drain out. It will dry up over time. So if I can get corn established in there and get a good tap root down through there, a root system down in there, when those roots die and bring carbon and organic matter into that soil, then I'm going to have a, uh, it's going to be a plus because then it'll allow it to dry a little bit more, even more. Pretty good load. I've got a little bit to do and i got two piles over there. I'm not going to finish tonight. I think this is my last load for the night and then I'm going to jet, jet on out of here. I'll have to move the skid steer to the other side of the piles and then I'll just go home with the tractor. I'm not terribly far away. It takes me about 15 minutes to get home. This tractor goes 34 mile an hour, so it's not a bad deal. Not a bad deal at all. So you just shoot for home and <coughs> come back tomorrow morning and finish the rest of it up because we're supposed to have rain. Three days of rain. Um, this ground has been so like I said earlier, soybeans and corn, or soybeans and wheat, soybeans and wheat, organic matter is terrible, but it's open, the ground is open so it dries out quick, and there's moisture down in there, and there's roots that go down a good foot from the soybeans, you know, them soybeans actually rooted really good, they went for water, but uh, the ground cracks open very quickly. Um, when I put that lime there last week, I was getting stuck backing the truck up in there. So when you're getting stuck backing a truck up, it's like, well, okay, um, yeah, is this ever going to dry out? But it dries out pretty quickly and then the ground cracks open, you know, it cracks open a half inch to an inch. And, you know, if we get rain, a quick deluge, that lime will just wash right down into those cracks and start the, uh, the, the process of you know uh, breaking down the you know breaking down that acid you know raising the pH level which is what we want 
this field here there's a horse farm over here and I gotta talk to them because you know I rent the ground I don't care that they're spreading their horse shit and stuff out here um, but you know they're spreading it out here they should at least know who's farming it anyway so I'll probably make an appearance I'll walk down there and talk if I see somebody I'll walk down and talk to them you know just say hey you know I don't mind you doing that it's fine spread it just spread it evenly and they have they've done a pretty decent job um, and maybe get them to go across the road uh, it's fine it's it's perfectly fine any manure is good and to be honest with you this field that had the horse shit in it tested higher the, the phosphate levels were were high higher than they should have been because they've probably been doing it for a good many years um, and but the calcium levels were higher the potash potassium levels everything was better that field is a good field uh, according to the soil test uh, uh, uh. and uh, even this field here wasn't bad at all I don't know if they put but there's a dairy an old dairy farm there and uh, that old dairy farm is that old dairy farm is uh, what should I say um, it's old I don't know when they stopped milking cows but this was you know I'm sure this was one of their favorite fields to put manure on um, but because it's close to the barn and uh, yeah it's just what I see so anyway I'll shut up and get on the on the spreading again What's a cooking thing? The the one that just the little stove. The cooking thing. Oh, stove. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Next you. Next time, talk with Dakwa. Stay there. Stay right here. Yes, my dear. I'm gonna go play okay. I won't go anywhere. You stay right there, boy. Hey, Dad, can you give me my over. car? The car's down there. The car's down. There.